The fascinating thing about the internet is this concept that it connects each and every one of us to everyone else. We've never had that before. All our media through human history has been a one-to-many structure, whether it's a, a verbal or orator in the old Greek days, whether it was newspapers and the newspaper editor delivering the news to the masses, whether it was radio. It was always the producer went out and gathered all the facts edited them down into a nice concise bundle of facts and delivered them to the user. And now the users all heard the same set of facts. And businessmen had the same problem. If you were building a car, you, you designed the car based on what you thought the market needed and you produced a car and you produced 100,000 of them and then you had to... But when you sold one to a customer, you sold it from your factory to that one customer. Today, the internet connects every single one of your customers, not just to you, but to each other. So you s produce a lemon of a car, and you have nowhere to hide, because your customers are going to tell each other about it, and then they're going to tell the rest of the world about it. And so it's actually a fundamentally healthy thing from a consumer point of view. It's a hell of a burden from a businessman's point of view, because it's no longer good enough to convince the world you have a better product for them you actually have to have a better product for them. Because if you don't, they're all going to find out about it soon enough because they're all going to tell each other. And conversely, if you do have a better product, suddenly you, know, you have these businesses that grow like topsy. You know, one day you've never heard of social networking and the next day Facebook and MySpace are worth billions of dollars. But I can tell you the best single positive one. Uh, that I know of, and of course I'd lived it, uh, was at Red Hat. And at Red Hat, uh, this is in oh, very early days when Mark Ewing and I were still operating out of our spare bedrooms, um, and yet we won the, uh, a major industry award for the best operating system, uh, best server operating system uh, anywhere from this, this major uh, uh, technology publisher. And all the other technology journalists stepped up and took note of this and go, hold on, you know, we, we know that, that this Linux phenomenon is going well, but, but Red Hat's a rinky-dink little outfit in the tobacco fields of North Carolina. And the competition for this was Microsoft, you know, multi-billion dollar world's most profitable corporation, Microsoft. It's Sun Microsystems, who were doing $10 billion a year. It's IBM, who were doing... $80 billion a year, it's, it's uh, Apple computer, it's uh, Novell. How do you pick little 25 person, you know, a few million dollar a year Red Hat as the best operating system? Is That's got to be a David versus Goliath story. It was actually the reverse. Our engineering team was bigger than the biggest engineering team at the biggest technology company at the time. Because, again, we had harnessed all of the engineers across the world who needed a better operating system. And by giving them away all the code and, and giving them away the right to, to make modifications to the code, we had a bigger engineering team than even Microsoft or IBM could afford to assemble. And yet there were only 25 of us down in the tobacco fields in North Carolina at the time. It was, to me... You know, the winning the award was kind of fun. It was when you had a beer after work and you start thinking about the ramifications of what this means that you really started to own in a very emotional way that the internet really does change everything.